Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So back to faith school week five. Week five. How many of you know that uh, it's so funny as a, as a, we have two more weeks in this series. I'm going to uh, next week and the week after um, we're going to I believe we're going to talk about uh, courage and or praise and how um, courage uh, something along those lines. And then also uh, maybe some faith friends. Um, how many of you know relationships matter? Uh, they matter a lot. Um, and so both praise and courage and faith friends. But today, uh, kind, of a, kind of a left turn, last minute, um, as I was like, okay, Lord, do I want articu- to go this way? Because this way would be maybe a little just, we have that packed. Um, but last minute, I decided, uh, me and the Holy Spirit, how's that? Um, <laughs> that we're going to talk about something a little different. And so we don't have a, a, a whiteboard. We don't have a easel. We have a last minute, uh, Pastor Nate, getting here quick. Where's some paint? Where's some, make something work. And so this is my, uh, this is my canvas. What do you think? You know, it's the podium taped and um, I got some colors. And so we're going to talk about colors. Actually, the title of this morning's message is Primary Colors. It's something that, um, uh, how many of you, how many primary colors, will you go ahead and throw up the wheel? Uh, I gave you, um, uh, I don't know if you have it, but it, there's an email this morning of a picture um, of a color chart. I don't know if, it, I, I didn't tell you that, it was just an email, but if you'll pull that up at some point, um, that'll be great. It's just the picture of a primary color uh, a color chart. How many of you ever went to art and you got to see it? Can somebody tell me the primary colors? Red, yellow, and blue. And from those colors come what? All kinds of colors. Uh, and so that, I, I believe that um, it's something that we, uh, th- th- this, this just kind of correlates to what the Lord has given us. He's given us. And so you look at this. It's so crazy. Um, if I was to ask you to come up here and paint a picture, um, I just want to talk about primary colors before we get into our secondary colors uh, this morning. Uh, secondary colors are your colors that come from the primary colors. How many of you know there's like an infinite amount of color? Uh, that you can create just from three colors. It's just, it's amazing. Um, and, uh, but if I was going to give you a, a word and you're going to pick a color, uh, how many of you know as kids when you say draw a flower, uh, the kid would be like they'd pick a color of their flower. They, you know, 64 colors, 100 and whatever colors, 96 colors, the crayons, right? There's all these different colors, red, violet, violet, red, blue, green, you know, magenta, right? All of these different colors. Um, but if I was going to give you a a, a word, like if I said, Hey, uh, uh, will you paint me, Jack, will you paint me a heart? What color would you maybe choose to paint a heart? What color? Red, 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 because that's kind of that universal color of a heart, which, and and you, I could say the word love. If I was going to say the word love, what color would you probably choose if you were to pick from the primary colors? Red, right? Like love, heart. So, um, and, and then like, let's say I p- picked another word uh, and you get to pick the color. Um, uh, let's say hope. Hope. What would be the color you'd pick for hope and a bright tomorrow? Anybody give me a color? Yellow. Yellow. Like that's kind of universal, isn't it? Isn't that strange how there's love is red and, and hope or is, is yellow, you know? Uh, and so, but here's what's crazy is, is if you look at this, um, there, this is all you can paint uh, with, with red, uh, with red that you can paint red, uh, with yellow you can paint, oh, nope, that's, I, get, I already got orange here, this is, that's, that's, that's your limit, that's your limit, isn't that interesting, just, this is your limit with those two colors, right there, that's all you get. With two, with two colors, you get just, and you know, did you notice how just the slightest bit of yellow changes so fast? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like if you are, if you ever used watercolors, right, you can get, have a little bit of paint on your paintbrush. Okay, this is art, right? This is back to school. It's okay to talk like just like basic stuff. Um, So yellow is, 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 it's so uh, easily moved, right? You know, kind of like your hope oftentimes. I mean, just the littlest. I mean, I, I actually tried to paint just red. I mean, look, I got, I, this, this, has, this has yellow on it, right? This has yellow and red. But I can 
I can put yellow and red, and you, you won't even hardly be able to, oops, I painted the carpet. You can't even tell that there's yellow in there. I got red on the carpet. Blood of Jesus, I guess is, no. <laughs> right there. You can't even tell, right? But I can have a complete, completely yellow paintbrush. Completely, this is my hope, right? My completely yellow, completely yellow. And then I can take just a teeny dot. And all of a sudden, ooh, it's going to ruin my paintbrush. All of a sudden, now I'm going to begin to get, oh, I got way too much. Uh, there you go. A little, little, little dot. And all of a sudden, uh, way, that's way too, see? It just changes so fast. Yellow is that way. If you've got to dip it out, you've got you to gotta, you gotta clean it all the way up. If you're going to have a true yellow, you can't have it tainted in any way. And so many times, that's like our hope. Our hope gets tainted and moves so quick. Like, so we have the love of God, so we're going to talk about our primary colors uh, today, um, and, and yet, here's this, we talk a lot about, we, we talk a, we're going to talk about hope today, and, and, and where hope really originates, because um, it's a piece that, that gets moved way too easy, um, but yet it's so vital. So like, just how you see here, uh, if I have yellow and I have red, I can only get orange, and that's it. But by adding, by adding just one more color, all of a sudden my limits now become infinite. By adding one more color, this blue, now I can take uh, some of this red and I can get purple, right? You know how that works. Got purple. I mean, I mean this is art, right? So we're getting kind of a purpley color. There we go. It's kind of ugly purple, you know, a little more red. Uh, we got a happy tree right here. Um, and I, I maybe could have just left this all alone and just told you about colors. Um, but what's so cool is I can now take the same blue. Um, excuse me, get my blue. I didn't have water. I can take the same blue and add just a little bit of yellow. And now I got a dark green. Um, again, you're seeing through the paper here. But there's green. Green, purple, red, yellow, orange. And so just this is what happens uh, when we have these three, the three primary colors. We can go infinite, infinite. Um, we're limited so many times uh, when we don't understand where, where hope really gets its legs. Hope is not just a, a wish that is um, like the fog of the air. But that's how we use hope a lot of times. We use hope like a wish. And a wish is like, uh, in a moment, and then something happens, and then it's gone. It's just, it's changed so easy. Uh, we're going to talk this morning about where faith, how faith is actually what, what precedes hope. And so many times right now, we, are, we, the, the, we have very little strength in, our, in, in people to continue to stand because they don't have a picture of hope. So we have to have hope if we're going to stand let me say it this way, if I was going to go and talk about courage, if you don't have a picture of, of, of victory, if you don't have a picture of being able to come out on top, you will not have courage to face tomorrow. Uh, if you have a picture that when you go to school, no one's going to like you, you're not going to want to go to school. So that's, why is that? Because of a picture. If you have a picture in your head uh, of uh, every time you go to the doctor, it's just, you know, this picture of they're going to give you a report and, and I just might as well not even go, right? When there could have been something that was a direction to change your, your tomorrow, but because of fear, you just, you just hold up in a sense because of just the wrong picture. So having the right picture is the result of having the right words, Having the right picture is a result of having the right words. And we're going to look at what the Bible says um, about, about having, you know, we're to fight the good fight of faith. We're to fight the good fight of faith. But to fight the good fight of faith, i got to have a picture of hope. So it's not just having the word. It's like the word. The word is to create a picture, and I'm supposed to color. I guess this is what the whole message was going to be about this start coloring. So I actually, there's a verse that says, uh, or a passage that says, Your eyes hasn't seen... Your ears haven't heard, uh, neither has entered uh, your heart the things the Lord has prepared for you. But, verse 10, uh, say, he says, but the Holy Spirit, he, he reveals them 
to you or is revealed to you by your spirit. There's, there are things, because as a child, this is something we do at a, as a very young age. We have our, our kids will bring us a picture, Mom, look. And you're like, what is it? That's a watermelon. No, Mom, that's a, uh, you know, you don't know what it is, but they have an idea. But they paint it. It's just like, wow, that's cool. You know, and we, we do that as kids so much. Did you know that the things that God has for your tomorrow, the, the hope and the picture for your tomorrow, he comes to you, the love of God. We're going to look at here in a minute, but in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, now these three remain, it's faith, hope, and love. We're just talking about the primary colors today, the primary things that are in every Christian's life. These are to be a part of all of faith is, it says that these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So you could put them like this. You could stair step them and you could say the foundation of faith is love. But the foundation of hope is faith. We're going to look at this and this is why faith and this is why hearing the word of God is so important because what it does is it gives legs to your hope. And, and if you know God loves you, you will begin to color or you'll begin to paint uh, you'll begin to declare uh, your tomorrow that God, out of his love, came to you with a word for your tomorrow. And if you'll receive that word, you can begin to color even instead of saying, well, I just don't know how. Have you ever told somebody, maybe they're not a great artist, uh, and you say, hey, draw me a, 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 a rose. And they go, I, I don't know how. But somebody else that's like, okay, and they do this, and they don't even think, like, that doesn't look like a rose. They're just like, yeah, I got that, I got that. There's, there's something on the inside of them, and it's like, okay, yeah. The, it's fear, fear of tomorrow, instead of hope of tomorrow, has, has grabbed a hold of the people of God in ways that it never should. It grabs a hold. Fear for, uh, for laying hands on the sick, instead of hope for laying hands on the sick, is, is, is the picture has caused faith to go only this far. Oh, you of little faith. Your faith only lasts as long as the picture in your heart can be sustained. You would have a picture of, I mean, he saw the wind and the waves. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up this, this story when Peter walked on the water. When his eyes, uh, eyes so, uh, our eyes so often abort the picture of faith, which is hope. And so if, if we're going to have faith on the earth when the Lord returns, okay, well, this is the basis scripture of everything that we've been talking about. It's in Luke 18, 8. I tell you, he says this, will the Son of Man, will he find faith on the earth when he returns? I'll tell you, he will not find faith in this house. He will not find faith in your house if you're hopeless. You'll run out of faith. You'll quit on faith. You will, you just let it, you'll let go. So the picture that you uh, allow, can I say that? That you allow the word of God to create in your heart. It matters that you give the word of God the allowance or your heart to paint. To like let the word of God and the promises of God to paint the picture in your heart. But so many times we're just like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I refuse to allow that word to paint a picture of tomorrow because I see this. Did you know you can have, against hope, you can believe in hope? That was Abraham, the father of our faith. He said against hope, he believed in hope. We're going to look at that this morning. Against hope, he believed in hope. In other words, he was 90, something, 100 years old. His wife was old. There's no reason he should, they haven't ever been able to have a kid. They tried lots of times for a very long time. There's no reason. So, he would say, you could say this, I don't want to get my, anybody here does not want to get their hopes up? I don't want to get my hopes up about, uh, maybe you've been here, I don't want to get my hopes up about this new job because every time I put in a prom for a promotion, what happens is, is I get bypassed. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to believe that I could, I'm just going to stay where I'm at. I'm going to live like this. I, I went into the doctor, and I've been battling cancer, and so, you know, this is my fifth time going into the doctor, and I don't want to go in there, and because last time they said it's grown. It was supposed to go the other way, and instead it got twice the size. So now I'm going in, and here's how I'm going in with just an expectation of, I just probably... 
probably not going to be very good. You know, you know why? You know, I, I'm going to keep my... See, if I, if I don't get my hopes up, then I don't have to be disappointed. Anybody, anybody ever have that mantra for something in their life? Wow. That's despair, isn't it? I don't want to go in and have them tell me that it got even bigger. I'm not going to get my hopes up. I refuse to let the Word of God color a picture differently, different than what I see with these natural eyes. I refuse. Again, Thomas said this. I will not believe unless I stick my hand or in his hand or my hand in his side. I will not. That tells me this. Belief is a choice. I refuse to get my hopes up. I refuse to allow the love of God and hope, which is now a wish. I refuse to allow uh, God's word. I refuse to allow God's word to give me liberty to paint a beautiful landscape. See, without God's word, so uh, faith is like the blue. Without that, you're limited in your tomorrow. You're limited in what you could see. You, can, you, can't, you can't draw the beautiful trees because they're only yellow, red, or orange. It kind of just looks like hell, fire. No real bright tomorrow. No real clear tomorrow. Somebody could, something, or Some word can come in and it can completely taint just in a moment and change your brightness into hang your head. But if you have something that is of substance, this blue, this, this faith, you can, you, can, you can color anything. You can color anything. Uh, we're going to, I hope, I'm not making too far of a stretch uh, uh, to the primary colors and faith, hope, and love. But what I'm saying is, if you don't have a word of God, if you, don't, if you are unwilling to let the word of God change or paint a picture for your tomorrow, you're limited and where you will go, you're limited in how long you will last. I don't know if anybody ever seen the show called Alone. Anybody? Uh, so it's a survival show on the History Channel. We just got done watching season 11. I love Alone. I, I don't think the money would want me to keep out there. I just would want to go out there and, and try to survive and kill a moose or something, um, which is what they did. And, and, and so people tap early. You know, they're trying to survive in the Arctic Circle in the fall into winter. So it's like, you're going to tap out. It's going to get too cold. Food's going to run out. And so whoever wins, wins $500,000. And and so you have like these 10 or 12 contestants, and they go out, and it just, they drop like flies, right? Something bad happens, or uh, what happens is they can't see. This is what happens more often than not. It's a mental game. I can't see how I could get more food and last beyond tomorrow. I can't see. And so the moment they stop seeing a hope of tomorrow, they then that pain that's in their leg, I mean, we have pains in our leg all the time and we just keep walking and it's like, oh, got a little catch there. They're like, it's probably because I ate that root and it could have been poisonous. I'm not sure. Uh, and you know what? My life, your leg has got a pain in it, bud. It's, it's only been six days since you've been out here, right? I, I could die. And you know what? Money's not worth dying. But there's, they don't have hope. Of, and because they haven't eaten in three days, they don't have hope for tomorrow. They don't have a picture in their heart of what could be of winning because it's been hard. Because it's been hard, you know what they do? They go, beep. Uh, yeah, this is John. I'm officially tapping out. Any, any, any official faith tapper outers in here? It, you know, some... It, okay. Anybody here ever tapped out in faith on something? Good, great. I got a couple honest people. When maybe it was with your kids, maybe it was with... Some, you just are like, I can't see a bright tomorrow. So I just say, beep. I'm officially done with this. I'm moving on. Is this making sense? Now, let's go to some scriptures here. Because if God's going to find faith in your house, in my house, on the earth when he returns, it's going to be because it's lasting. It's lasting faith. Um, and, and, you know, you can't have, again, lasting faith 
Uh, and to have faith, it, it's, it can't be uh, your mom's faith. It can't be your brother's faith. It can't be your pastor's faith. It has to be your faith. It can't be your wife or your husband's faith. It has to be your faith. It has to be you. Faith is coming under the word of God. It's that simple. Faith is coming under the word of God. So let's look at a few scriptures here. And I think this is so cool uh, just to think, uh, well, yeah, let's go again. I'll give you these scriptures so you can maybe uh, reheat these a little bit uh, during this week. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, which is faith, hope, and love. Uh, these three remain, but the greatest of these is love. Okay, John, so we're going to look just a moment, just a little review of, of love. You know, John chapter 14, verse 18, I, I love this picture. The Lord said, I won't leave you as an orphan. You know when we get hopeless? It's because we're alone. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're hopeless when you're alone. Like if you had somebody there that was better at fishing than you, or you had somebody there that had a skill that you didn't have, or you had somebody who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you could ask, think, or hope, or imagine. In other words, his power is not limited. His love for you, his strength for you is not limited. You aren't hopeless. He says this, I, I will not, and this is John chapter 14, verse 18, I, who is I? I am. He is, will not leave you and me as orphans. So uh, when you and I are an orphan, we are alone. We are, in a sense, helpless. We are limited. He said, I, I, this is the love of God. I'm showing up. He didn't send somebody else. He didn't, some, he said, I'm coming. I, I'm, I'm coming. I'm going to send my son who in him, the Bible tells us, dwells all of me. I'm, I'm coming for you. This is a big thing for you because this is the foundation of faith. Right here is love. Yeah, the greatest of these, faith, hope, and love. These three, these primary colors, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these the, 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 is love. If you don't understand, if we don't get, have a grasp that he didn't leave us, he came for us. John 3, 16, he came for you, he came for me. If I don't get that, if I don't know that he's not leaving me an orphan. He's not leaving me an orphan. He's not leaving me alone. In this moment of trial, he's not leaving me alone. He said, if you call unto me, he said, I'll, what did he say? I'll answer. And he said, you call and I'll show you some, some good things, some great things. Sometimes we do, the, the, what we, why we're so hopeless is we refuse to call, and so we, we don't get the, the show. We don't get to see when we call on him, he'll show us some great things. Anyway, I didn't give you that verse. I'm just quoting it. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he gave his son. It's like, uh, you know, you know, somebody needed to sit down. I, I remember, uh, uh, I think it was Philip uh, Parker that said this first, but the uh, first time I ever heard somebody say it. Um, somebody needed to sit down, and he was sitting down, and so was his wife. And, uh, and he, go, he, said, uh, he said, oh, you want to sit down here? Mona, get up. <laughs> I was like, that's great. You know, just hilarious. Not, not good as in, yeah. So I, here, let me get up. Instead of, you know, as a gentleman, you would get up, right? Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, yeah, he didn't send somebody else. He didn't send somebody else's son. He didn't say, you get up and, and, and you can sit down. No, he got up. He did. Because, because he loves us. Because he loves you. So settling that fact, I love this. In Romans chapter 8, verse 32, he did not spare his own son. This is just a good one. To, he did not spare his own son. Uh, but he gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things graciously give us all things so that's love faith hope and love i want you to see this in psalms 27 verse 13 and this is where i said the greatest of these is love john or excuse me first corinthians 13 13 but look at this verse here um uh, psalms 27 13 it tells us that i would have despaired if I had not believed. Psalms 27, 13, amplified. I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have despaired. Yeah, I, would not have, I would have despaired if what? Oh, we're not up there yet. Sorry, Landon. Um, yeah, I gave him these verses kind of last minute here. So, But Psalms 27, 13, it says, I would have despaired if I hadn't what? 
Oh, it's up there. What would have happened to me if I had not believed? I, that I, I would have despaired. In the Amplified, uh, just regular, I guess that's the classic. But it says this, I would have despaired. You can see it here. Uh, what would have happened? What would have come of me if I hadn't believed? I, 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 would have, I would have ran out. I would have fell short. I would have quit. I would have despaired. So the key to hope is belief. Despair, so, so, so belief always precedes hope. So faith, believing, believing always precedes hope. Not, I'm not talking about a wish. I'm not talking about a prayer where you and I say, well, I prayed, so I hope so. Because if you pray, you shouldn't say, I hope so. If you pray, you should say, I believe. If you pray, and you pray according, either you are saying, I prayed, so I hope so. You prayed, and you didn't pray according to the will of, or the word of God. But if you pray according to the word of God, you don't say, I, well, I hope so. Well, I hope so. No, you say, I believe. It's kind of like that going back to school, that faith school, or just going back to school. I don't know if you ever had this experience. I did in middle school, and I got pretty upset at the moment, and I just walked out of the classroom. Terrible, but that's really what happened. I needed to go to the bathroom. So I said, uh, Mr. Burquist, Mr. B, can I go to the bathroom? And he said, I don't know, can you? And I was like, uh, can, I, can I please go to the bathroom? I really, I really do have to go. I don't know, can you? Well, I didn't, I didn't know he was trying to make a point to me where I was supposed to say, may I go to the bathroom? I didn't understand. I had never had this happen to me before. I'm in middle school at this point, and now I feel like he's just not being very kind to me. And I'm like, all right, see ya. I just walked out. You're supposed to have a hall pass and all this kind of stuff. I walked out, and I went to the bathroom, came back in, kind of got in trouble. Um, but I, at the moment, I didn't. I didn't understand. I didn't understand that there is a difference in your approach where you say, can I, having to do with your ability, may I, I was supposed to ask for permission. Well, this is kind of like belief and hope. I believe or I hope. So many times we're using these words we don't really realize uh, and they don't give us, we don't have understanding of what we're really saying. When you say, well, I, well, I really hope that this happens, you do? Tell me what it looks like. Tell me what's your hope. Well, I don't, uh, well, I just am saying, I hope something good happens. I mean, so you're just wishing. You don't really have hope? Because hope is the picture or the, the joyful expectation of good. If you're saying, I hope, and it's true hope, if it's really hope, you can tell me about the picture. But we're, we're so many times, we, we pray, and we don't even know God's will on the matter, so we don't have real hope. We have a wish, we have a, well... I, I hope, I hope I'm, in. and so here's what, our, our faith gets attacked, the love of God and his love for me gets attacked because we, we think, well, if he loves me, he'll do something. Okay, let's keep going here. So, again, Psalms 27, 13, I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So, belief precedes hope. You know, here's what's interesting, um, I think we're waiting too long to believe. Like it's a like it's a mental exercise. Like we're gonna believe. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna believe. Like, like this is this hard. I gotta just get it just right. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm ready now. Like my stance of faith. Okay, hold on, hold on. Got my scripture. Got my highlighter. Got my pen. Okay, all right. Now, now I'm ready. When really it's just coming under. So. It, it, we're, we're, we're waiting to believe, but we're actually not waiting to believe. We're waiting to see before we believe. And so we're looking to see so we can believe. But this is, this is maybe a simple uh, translation. Uh, when, you, when did you get saved when you asked the Lord to come into your life and to be your Lord? At what point are you going to get saved? So like the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, if you... Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. For it is the, with the heart man believes, and with, is with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay? So, if you've never been born again, Chad, let's just use Chad for example. You, you gave your life to the Lord how long ago? Fully six years ago? 
10 years ago, okay. 10 years ago, he fully gave. So when are you going to get saved? Oh, you got saved. When, when, did, when did you get saved? Well, when you prayed. So it happened then? So you, you believe that it happened then? So like when you prayed, it was right then, right now? Hmm. How come it is that when we pray for healing, then, that we're waiting to see before we believe? What are we waiting to see? We, it doesn't translate. It doesn't translate like, I believe, that if you believe in your heart, do you believe that God raised Christ from the dead? I do. Okay. Well, do you call him your Lord and say, I do. So then what are you? Right. Saved. When? Right. Now. Okay. So let's, let's talk, uh, when you, again, this is according to his word. Yeah. And this is where, going back to week one of faith school now, all the scripture is breathed by God. One translation said, it's not just God breathed, it's, it's breathed by God. Scripture is breathed by God. In other words, it came out of his mouth. So if he said that, all you and I have to do to believe now is say, come under that word and stay under that word. Just stay under that word. You know how people lose their salvation? They, they, God didn't move. God didn't move. They just moved. So they're not confident in the word of God. So if they're not confident in the word of God they're not under that word, then they will struggle to appropriate grace. So the Bible says that it is by grace you've been saved through faith. This is, let's, well, let's go. Um, let, 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 let's, let, me, let me stick with my notes a little bit here. I tried to rearrange them and get into a right order, head order here. Um, so we've been waiting too long to believe. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says this, now, when is faith? When I see it? No. Now. Like when, right then. So when you pray, you should believe. But that, actually, let's jump here. Uh, we're going to jump pretty far down. Uh, let's go to all. I don't even know if I have it in the notes. I do uh, Mark 11, 24. Mark eleven twenty four 24 and Matthew 21, 22. It tells us this. It says, uh, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, what are you supposed, you're supposed to hope? No. What are you supposed to do? So when you pray, we're not supposed to hope. We're supposed to believe. We're supposed to, when, when, are, when are we supposed to believe? When you ask in prayer. Like, that's when you believe. When you pray. Not, well, I just, I prayed and we just got to, so how, how are they doing? Like, like I, I'm looking for, uh, well, you yeah, know, yep, yep, yep. No, I believe when I prayed. When you pray for a, a a financial provision, you and I can believe when we pray. And when we pray, when we believe, that right there, we're going to get back to Hebrews 11 here after Matthew 21 here. But what, what that does is it puts, it puts something under your hope. Our hope falls so fast when there's nothing there. We're going to look at that here in a moment, but I want you to see Matthew chapter 21. Verse 22, it says, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. When do you, if you, if you hope? No. Nope. If you believe. So belief, it precedes hope, but hope in that picture that we keep before us is what sustains faith. It's interesting how tied together faith and hope are. Faith precedes hope, but hope Hope sustains faith. So I got to have hope if I'm going to stay in faith. Because otherwise what you're going to say is this. You're going to say, I'm just so tired of fighting the fight of faith. Anybody ever said that? I'm just so tired of this stuff. You know what you say? I just want to quit. You know why? Because you don't have faith. Your hope has fallen. Why is your hope fallen? That's why you want to quit. Your hope has fallen. You got to get back up that word to hope. The, they they work together. So so faith. It's good. It, it, they work together. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. But these two, they're a pair. They're a pair. You can't have hope without faith, and you won't keep faith without hope. 
I would have despaired if I had not believed I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So instead, I believed, and so now I don't have despair. No, I have a picture of hope, and that picture of hope is allowing me to hold on and continue to grab faith. This is good. This is good. All right? Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. So now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You've maybe heard it said in the King James, it says this, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is a substance. Faith is the assurance of what you're hoping for, the conviction of things not seen. Let's just, again, what I, what I mentioned there a moment ago, I'm, I'm believing it's creating word pictures, you know, like how they, they work together. You can't, have, you can't have hope without faith, but faith won't remain without hope. So, it says, again, we're, gonna do, we're just going to pick apart just a, for a moment here. Again, and the, here's the deal about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So faith is not seen. So th- this, this, just this verse, let's just establish this right here. Faith is not seen. Now, can it, can, just like the wind is not seen. Now, can the effects of the wind be seen? Yeah. Can the effects of faith be seen? Could, what would be some effects of faith? So some effects of faith would be joy. Uh, some effects of faith would be maybe praise. Some effects of faith would be taking that step, walking, being a doer of the word and not a hearer. Like that's faith. So there's, you can't see the wind, you can't see faith, but you can see its effects. So faith, you can't see it, but yet faith produces in us what you can see, which is hope. Isn't that cool? So the word of God, you, can't, you can read it written on the page, but when it comes forth, it is spirit. The Bible says John 6, 63, it comes forward or forth in, in, into our heart, and it creates a picture. When you paint a picture with the Lord, it doesn't come from here. It comes from here. And you begin to color with, with faith. Hope and love. You begin to color and you color and you, now you can add to a picture that you're not waiting for somebody to try to tell you what the limits are. No, because there are no limits with God. Instead, your eyes haven't seen them, your ears haven't heard them, neither has entered your heart. But the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Word of God is revealing them to you and you can paint from your heart. I'll tell you, the call of God on your life and what you're limited to do is only based upon you and I receiving the love of God and his word, and let that picture come out of you and bring that into this world. You know, there's a lot of hope that is to be going out into this world. You on your job, you're to be bringing hope. There are things to be created. Hope is a picture. There are pictures and inventions and uh, events and I don't know, clubs and all kinds of things that are created, and they're only created because you received a word of God, and that word of God, you, you gave yourself, in a sense, permission to color out a tomorrow because you believed in his love for you, his word, and that picture now can be painted. Well, what am I called to do? Am I supposed to be a doctor? Am I supposed to be a plumber? Am I supposed to be a coach? Am I supposed to... Okay, let's... Uh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and there is no one like you. Your fingerprint isn't like anyone else's, and yet you're supposed to have an identity and a job? And you're to be limited, and you're, this is what I do. I, I, I can make, I'm supposed to have two point whatever kids, or one, I think it's less now, like 1.8 children, and uh, make $65,000. This is my cap. This is my box. I just want to believe that we need to start taking our stinking color sheet and we need to just start (laughs) Woo! what have we got here I don't know but we're going to make a flower over here wait uh, uh, excuse me guys Um, this right here do you not see this this is uh, this is um, this is what you uh, guys uh, this is the this is uh, the box Um, this is uh, uh, religion uh, this is where you're supposed to stay in, and um, just just do this. Um, just just it'll all work out. Just draw a heart right here. Um, we're just gonna draw a heart, but we're gonna color everything within that box um, with the heart, and and it's just gonna kind of get real dark after a little while, because 
because when, when, when I don't have a canvas to paint on and I just, they all just get mixed up, what ends up happening is things just do get dark. If that analogy doesn't stick, that's okay. But some of you are understanding. <laughs> get outside the lines. Get your, here, let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. Get your hopes up. Get your hopes up. How do you know if your hopes up? Because you can tell me about a picture that is not limited to some little canvas. You can tell me about the smell in your picture. You didn't know pictures could have smell? Well, I don't know. But Willy Wonka, he could have wallpaper that tasted. Come, <laughs> schnozberry. Who ever heard of a schnozberry? You can have a schnozberry. What is a schnozberry? I don't know. Somebody thought of it. There are rescue missions. There, are in, there, are, there is hopelessness and depression that somebody gets a picture and creates some tool or, or a, a reminder and it just it, it's an aid for somebody for depression and it saves hundreds of people because you made a bracelet. Can I tell you that maybe even the WWJD that somebody had a picture of, like, why don't we just put that on a bracelet? Can I tell you, there's been some fights saved. There's been some marriages saved. There's been some, maybe some condemnation that didn't come because they just had that reminder of what did. There's been somebody, somebody did something that preserved it. I'm telling you, this is just the beginning limit. I mean, just Don't be limited in what God's called you to do. Instead, approach it. The just are to live by faith. What does that mean? Again, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. So now, again, faith, it implies uh, that I can't see it, but I believe it. Okay? And faith, I can't see, but it gives me, and it paints a picture that I can see, which is hope. Okay? So now, oh, calm down, Nate. <laughs> I'm passionate about this because we live too limited Vision, the people of God are to have sight. But when I don't know that I have one who I am, who is with me, I'm not an orphan, who can do exceedingly abundantly above all ask, think, or hope, or imagine, I am limited in the picture that I will paint for my life. I'm limited in, we are we limited as a church of what the impact will have in this community if all we paint with is ourselves. The, the upcoming election, the, no matter who gets in office, we will be extremely limited of tomorrow if all we paint with is ourselves. Let's paint with God. Let's paint with Him. Uh, I just believe that there's destinies and things that you, you, uh, I heard this said this way just recently. There isn't a plan B. We have too many contingency plans. You know what that is? No faith. No confidence. My hope. I don't want to get my hopes up. Better have a plan B, C, D, E. So Hebrews chapter 11, now faith is the assurance. Let's just define assurance real quick. It's two words, and this is just helpful for us. It mean, one of them is hupo and histamine. I thought it was going to be histamine, but that's not where that word comes from. <laughs> but it, one, the first word means under. So it's two words, one meaning under or under authority, and then histamine means to stand. So it means to stand under. This is the assurance. There's something under or something that is standing under or holding or in the way the best picture for the assurance is a pillar there is something faith is the pillar that allows hope to stand that's what faith is the assurance of what you're hoping for faith is the substance faith is the assurance faith is the pillar faith is the prop or the support of hope but hope is what keeps you and me in the fight of faith. So you can't have one without the other. you got to have both. So if we are hopeless, it's because we don't have faith or his will or his word on that matter. 
when I have his word on that matter, can I just not only give you permission, but can I encourage you to allow his word to begin to create that which you're to color? See, here's the deal. There are a lot of pictures in you and me that have not been put out yet. A lot of times, just simply because we don't want to get our hopes up. And so really what's attacked there is faith. They're both attacked. Okay, let's keep going here. And we'll, we'll kind of bring this into the kind of a landing here. Um, so faith is assurance of what we hope for. It's the cert- certainty or the conviction or, uh, again, the certainty. When, is, when are you certain? When is faith certain? Now. Like, so faith is the assurance of what you're hoped for. It's certain. I, I, I know it. I know. I know. And so it's certain. So if you're certain, you don't have to be, well, I don't want to get my hopes up because then I, because I'm certain. So, so if you're certain, then you should start coloring. So if you're not coloring, it's because you're not certain. You're uncertain. So if you're uncertain, what do you need to do? If I said, hey, this is how this works, 2 plus 2 equals 4, and you go back and you're like, oh, okay, well, I, I didn't learn that yet. Like, I, I think it's this, but I'm not certain. Uh, you call on the teacher, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, which he'll bring you his word, and he'll show you the word again. And so faith comes by hearing and hearing that word. So as you come under that word, you go, wait, no, 2 plus 2 is 4. No, no, he said, if I ask according to his word, it says here in his word or here, then I have what I ask. So when I pray, believe, so I'm able to believe according to... I, okay. Okay, wait, wait. I get back, and I, if I'm uncertain, I get back the word of God out so I can get certain on it. Yeah. Are you certain about what the word of God says for your children? Are you certain about what it says for your finances? How about for your body? Again, you can't have Pastor Nate's verse. You can't have my scripture. You can't have my faith. Now, that, that is, the word of God is written to you, but you're going to have to make it your own. Faith is personal, but it's not private. You, it will be seen, but it is personal. Make it your own. So now, close with this verse. Thank you, Lord. In this, <clears throat> Acts chapter 27, verse 25. You know what takes courage to paint what you haven't seen before? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Anybody know what I'm talking about? It takes courage to take a step out. I'll just go ahead and throw this one out there. Just <clears throat> So cool. God's so cool. Even last week. How many of you were here last week? Again, carrying the one, carrying the one, carrying the one. I, I saw that even the I am, I will not. I saw it as a one. I will not leave you as orphans. Carry that one in. <clears throat> but last week as we were closing out the message, I, I, even the numbers that I wrote on the 2915, I don't know where that number came from. I was trying to come up with, uh, it's like, well, shouldn't the number mean something? This was, as I was preparing th- that week for Sunday's message, I was like, well, shouldn't the number mean something? If I'm gonna carry the one, shouldn't it be like adding up to something like, I don't know, something that means something and it would just make sense? 29, 15. That's 44. I'm like, that's, okay, what is the 44? 40, 40 days in the, no, 44. I don't, I don't know. I guess, I guess I'm overthinking it. This is 29, 15. I just kept on getting 29, 15. So I'm like, all right, we'll throw 29, 15 up there. And so that's what we taught. And at the end of the message, I just finished up by talking about it'll work on any equation. You just carry the one. Just carry the one. You just carry the one. And so I went to write another equation. Uh, but when I did, I wrote a three. And I'm like, oh, in my head, this is self-talk. You dummy, write a big number so that it, it's going to for sure, you know, hit 10. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's just erase all the top and write 999, right? And then, so I did. And then when I added them up, it added up to 1, 2, 3, 4. How, and I, and I, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> like in that moment, I was like, this is the factor. It's just a factor to get things in order, to get things working. You've been afraid. You, you're just, you're not carrying the one. The Lord's, he said, I'm not leaving you. But it takes courage. 
to color. You know, what if they're not going to like it? Just keep painting your flower or your heart. Just paint a heart. Just paint a heart. Because, you know, every, I, every, just paint a circle or a triangle. It takes courage. I don't know how to do that. Okay? So just don't. So just be limited. Because he's given you and me some things that we're the steward. So it takes courage to color. So I'll give you this example. Um, it's been probably 12 years ago, 15 years ago, I don't know, 12 years ago now. And I remember the stage in this church looked different. Um, I remember standing on the stage because there was a confidence. I could see a picture because I had a firm word. So just because you were in faith doesn't mean you are in faith. Just because you were raised in faith doesn't mean you stay in faith. Okay? So this is a... Again, will I find faith? Well, that means it has to be sustained. Hope is the picture that sustains faith. So I talked about, from the stage, about a piece of property um, that I believe that we're supposed to have for this house, for this church. And it was uh, right across from the Workman's Gas Station, right over here, the Hilltop Travel Center. And I I actually called the realtor on it, and and it was like $2.4 million for the front piece, and then... uh, I think together it was 2.4 for all 26 acres. And I was like, okay. And the realtor said this. I just haven't, I guess the right person hasn't come into the right people's hands yet. And I said, yep, that's right, because that's coming into ours. I, on, on the phone, the realtor, I remember right where I was at, looking at the land. And, uh, and so I communicated to the church, passed out these, like, little cards back when magnets, and we didn't have QR codes or anything like that yet. I mean, this is... 10, 12 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, I don't know. And I cast the vision, but that's not where we're going to pay for it. And then it came into our hands. And then it came into our hands. It's like, wow. It's like we are those who dream. You ever have God do something exceedingly abundantly above us that you think or hope or imagine? Wow, it's bigger, better. But see, it, it's the same. And here's the thing. Sometimes we think we've got to have bigger faith to go to the next level. This much faith will move this mountain. You don't need more faith. You just need to retain faith. I'm going to say that again. You don't need more faith. You just need to retain faith. What is it that retains faith? Hope. What is it that steals faith? Despair or hopelessness or worry. And after receiving that land, uh, we had... Uh, there were some things in some writing that kind of had me hesitant, but also there was, I can tell you this, it wasn't just the things in writing that had me hesitant, it was uh, another word. Anybody ever get another word? It now causes, it, it, it's, so now that another word, it causes a different picture to begin to be painted. And it, what it was, was one of self-sustain. And I was like, I don't want to be and I don't want something that I'm going to have to self-sustain. Yet, it was, I never brought it. So he who began a good work in you, can I say it? He who began a good work in you, the call of God on your life, the things that he's spoken to you, he who began a good work in you is faithful to bring it to completion. If you'll work with the word, and you'll walk with the word, and you'll allow that word to paint the picture, and then you now take a step of faith and begin to color what you see. This is how it works. And that picture of that land, I I had that that hang up, and just when I thought I, I, I got over the picture of, ugh, 2020 hit. And prices went crazy, and and now, faith that was just this much seemed like I needed about this much. And I was like, uh-uh. And faith doesn't originate within yourself. It's not something you muster up. It comes back to hearing again what God said. So if you're struggling and you're about ready to quit, you're about ready to throw in the towel, what do you got to do? Hear again, 
here again and allow, give permission to the Word of God to paint the picture in your heart and then you, by faith, take a step and begin by taking that paintbrush and start. And that's even on that land over there. The picture that I had seen in my heart and, and that was to be communicated and we were to do together, I had pushed pause. And, um, and just because I hesitant, it's like it weighs on me, it's weighing on me, it's weighing on me. But I believe it, there's things that are weighing on the Lord. See, what I mean by that is this. God is the one who watches over His Word to perform it. When I take his word and then think I'm the one that has to perform it, I'm not in faith. And then I won't move. And so then the limiting factor, whether it's somebody sick in a wheelchair that never, it's, it's not God. It's the people of God that have a picture of despair in place of hope and their faith is Place in us a picture of hope. Let's stand this morning. Place in us, again, a picture of hope. Tell me about school and how school is going to be. Tell me about your job. Tell me about your place. Tell me about it. No, no, no. I didn't ask you to use these eyes. Close your eyes and tell me. And is that what God said? If it is, come on, keep on coloring. If it's not, if it's not, Ask the Lord, or even right now, for that picture of hope and His word that you need to replace that other word, the opposing word. What word do I need to replace so that I can paint the picture of hope and my days will be filled with a whole lot more brightness? And where it's bright, I have sight and I continue the walk of faith. Amen. Father, thank you. Just we bow our heads, just close our eyes. Just, uh, just us and Him, us and the Lord. Father, where, where we've lacked hope, where we've let go, we just ask you to fill us again with vision, with brightness, because you're watching over your word to perform it. Father, thank you for your word again coming to these people, to us concerning our today, concerning our tomorrow. Your word for our children, Lord. Your word for all of our days. Your word for our bodies. Your word. And we make the choice today to allow you to paint. Lord, paint. Paint in our hearts a picture of hope. A bright tomorrow, for I know the thoughts and the plans that you have. One of hope and the future. So, Father, thank you that the path of the righteous, our path, shines brighter and brighter. We just say that it's getting brighter. It's getting brighter. It's getting brighter. Father, thank you. It's getting brighter. It's getting brighter in here. It's getting brighter for me. It's getting brighter for we. It's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. You said the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it's a good way to close a message is simply giving yourself something. Look at the picture. Have you, have you let go of it? Is faith still holding on? Man, we got some. And, and for me, this is one of these things that I could hear this message again. Because I, it's so many times, it's like, what is the relation? Well, I know that God loves me, but what's the relation? Now, greatest of these is love. Okay, great. But what's the relationship between faith in hope. Faith is what paints the picture. But the picture of hope is what sustains this. You gotta have both. If one is down, 
If one is down, you got to go back. Now, faith, hope, and love. you got to go back to faith to get the picture and then keep that picture. Amen. 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 Well, if Wednesday night is coming up. we got night of prayer. No, night, a small group Wednesday. Uh, excited about that. Other than that, we will see you. If you need prayer for healing or anything like that, I'll tell you, don't, go, don't leave the church where you have the people of God where two or more can come together in agreement. Right? If you have a need... Man, grab somebody's hand. Come on, come on down front. We'll, we'd love to agree with you. Other than that, we'll see you guys Wednesday night. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the Word of God. If you need prayer, feel free to text us at the number on the screen below. You can also send us an email to info at beyondchurch.org or submit a prayer request form on our website at beyondchurch.org. If you'd like to partner with us in preaching Jesus, you can give securely online through our app or website, or if you prefer to mail your gift, send it to the address shown below. Stay connected with us throughout the week. You can download the app for all of our latest messages and announcements, and be sure and follow us on our socials at Beyond Church. If you've never attended in person, we highly encourage you to plan a visit. You'll never regret prioritizing godly community. We love you and hope to see you soon.